Okay, welcome everyone to our July edition of Think Break. Uh, we have with us today uh, Rachel Buchanan uh, with the Pharaoh. We also have Elizabeth and Elizabeth, I can't remember your last name, I'm sorry. Whitaker, that's okay. Whitaker, okay, Elizabeth <laughs> Whitaker. And they're both going to do some demonstrating for us on, uh, on, on the use of JAWS. And I believe with uh, with my, maybe Microsoft Word or something, but I'm going to let them describe all of that to you. So we're really happy to have them here with us. And uh, and so Rachel and Elizabeth, I'm going to I'm going to hand it over to y'all and, and let you go. And for everyone joining at the end, we will have uh, save about a 10 minute period there for uh, for questions and answers. Uh, you can put questions in the chat. Jan's going to be monitoring that. She's helping me co-host today. And uh, and at the end, we'll have Q&A. So we'll read out of the chat so you can ask live questions. All right, y'all take it away. All right, thank you, Craig. And thank you, Jan, for having us. We are so happy to there be here. Go. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Okay, yeah. Cool. All right. So as Craig said, my name is Rachel Buchanan. And joining me is my teammate, Elizabeth Whitaker, um, usually referred to as Liz. And we're going to be talking about some document formatting. We both are on the user education and outreach team at Vespero. And in case that is a little confusing, Vespero is the parent company to Freedom Scientific. So it's just, there's several brands under Vespero and one of them is Freedom Scientific that we do training and documentation for. So thank you so much for having us once again. And I am going to hand it over to Liz. She is going to demo today. All right. Thank you, Rachel. And I'm going to share my screen here. And I think I might need to be made a co-host in order to do that. Okay. Let me, uh, let me okay. find you here. I might be listed as FS trainers. FS trainer, yes. Yeah, okay. Sorry about that. I forgot to change okay. that. Have a number of tasks that we're going to go over today, but... Um, don't worry if, if it seems like it's moving a little fast, we are going to give you guys a handout that will have all of the keystrokes and all the information here. And uh, like Rachel said, it's pertaining to formatting documents. And some of these are JAWS specific and some of these tasks are not, they're word specific. So just have a handful of things that are really important uh, when you're working with documents. Okay, you should be a co-host now, Liz. Okay, I'm going to and I can. So I'm going to share my sound here so that you guys can hear. Mute. Task switching. Blog post. Join us. All right. Can you guys see the screen and can you hear Jaws? Yes and yes. Okay. Join now, us. if at any point this needs the speech needs to be slowed down or sped up, let me know because I'll be happy to do that. So I'm going to jump right in here. The first thing I want to talk about is selecting text, and there are a number of reasons why you will want to do this. You can do it to copy and paste information from one place to another. You can do it to perform formatting tasks like bold and uh, font changes and things like that in a document. So there are a lot of reasons you want to select text. Now, there are several ways you can do that. I'm just going to go over a couple here for the sake of time. The way you can select an entire document is by pressing Control and the letter A, and that's a Windows command. And if I press that, I have a document here on my screen that's a blog post that I wrote. So we have all kinds of stuff in this document we're going to be working with. So I'm going to press Control A. 1,588 characters selected from Join Us for Word Tips and through ME equals normal voice heading level two. All right. So. Oh, hey, Liz. Uh -huh. Let me turn it down just a smidge. Turn uh, it, sure. Uh, turn it down. Slow it down. Sorry. Slow it down. Okay. I mean, sure. I just am assuming yeah. that not everyone's experience. That's kind of what I was thing. wondering. Yeah. I had yeah. It. That's so slower, slower. Okay. Join us for word tips and tricks from Power. Is that better? I think. Yeah. No. I think so. Is that good, guys? I think so. Yeah. Okay. okay. All right. All right. So if anybody has any any preferences on that, let me know. All right. So Control A. One thousand five hundred eighty-eight characters selected. From join us for word tips and through ME equals normal voice head. Okay, for some reason it's not reading quite right here, but what it's supposed to tell you here is that it's selecting from the first um, word in the document through that last word in the document. And from here, I could do a number of things, which I will show you here in just a few seconds. All right, 
I'm going to press an arrow key. When you select text, you can press any arrow key to deselect it. J. And I'm going to show you a couple other ways to select. So if you are familiar with reading documents in JAWS, you use your up and down arrow keys to read a line at a time, right and left to navigate a character at a time, control right and left to navigate a word at a time. When you want Microsoft Word document, join us. When you want to select uh, text, you can just use those reading commands and add the shift key to those commands. So for example, I can press shift down arrow to select a line at a time. Selected. Join us for word tips and tricks from PowerJaws users. And if I wanted to select a character at a time, I could press shift right arrow, or if I want to select a word at a time, control shift right arrow. So those are some really good commands. For example, I can, if I wanted to bold certain text or underline certain text, I could use control shift right arrow to select just those words I wanted to bold or underline or italicize. All right, so like I said, there are many ways to select text, but these are the ones we're gonna use today. J. So now I want to show you how to use this and, and apply this to something that you're doing. So three common formatting commands that you would want to do to a document for certain types of text are bold, underline, and italic. And these are what are called toggles because you use the same keystroke to turn them on and then to turn them off. Now you can, for example, you can turn bold on with control B. You can press control B and then type the text you want to bold and then press control B to turn it off again. That works fine. The only thing that can sometimes happen is if it gets left on somehow, it can wind up bolding text in your document that you did not mean to. So I like to personally, this is just my personal opinion, I like to select the text, I like to type it first and then select it and then apply that formatting to it. So we're here on the title and I'm gonna go ahead and press the home key to go to the beginning of the line. Home. And I am going to use control shift right arrow to select this title a word at a time. Join us for word tips and tricks from Power Jaws users selected. And after it reads each word, it says the word selected. So it lets mm -hmm. you know that it's selected. So now if I want to press control, if I want to bold this text, I'll press control B. Bold on. And it said bold on. I could underline it with control U. Underline on. And I could italicize it with control I. Italic on. So this is some really important text here. So I want to do all three. So I will show you here in just a minute how to tell whether or not your text is bolded or underlined or whatever it is that you've done to it. Okay, so now we're going to, I'm going to show you how to set the line spacing. So once again, I'm going to press an arrow key, any arrow key will do, J. to deselect the text. Now I'm going to use that control A command to select the entire document because right now it is single space and I want to double space it. So I'm going to press Control A. 1,588 characters selected. And now I can press Control 2, 2 on the number row. So Control 1 on the number row is single space. Control 2 is double space. And just in case you need this, Control 5 is 1 and a half, so 1.5 spaces. So I'm going to press Control 2. Control 2. All right, JAWS didn't say anything, but here again in a minute, I'm going to show you how to determine whether your text is actually double spaced. All right, so while we have our text, our entire document selected because I'm not deselected it, let's change the font. So previously Microsoft Word, the, the default font for Word was 12 point times New Roman. And that's commonly used in school. You use that for a lot of research papers and things. That's very common citation style font. But that's not the default in Word anymore. So let's go ahead and change the font and the size of this document. So I've, I have the document selected. Now, this is really important here. You do need to select the text that you want to, where you want to change the font of before you change the font. If you don't, you will not, the font won't actually change. So now I'm going to press Control D. Control D, font, font, edit combo. 
and we're in the font dialog box. And there's a whole lot of stuff in this box. We're not going to use, we're only going to use a couple of things here. But the first area that it places you in is a box where you can select the actual font that you want. Now, there are so many fonts here. We want Times New Roman. Now, if I press the letter T, it's going to take me to the fonts that begin with T. If I press TI really quickly, and I'll do that now. I want to have a uh, jaw set to, sorry, uh, characters or words instead of characters, but I, I typed TI. And so now if I down arrow. TI, Times New Roman. Okay, so it lands right on Times New Roman. All right, so that's what I want, but I want to do one more thing. I want to change the size. So I'm going to press tab. Font style, edit combo. So I don't want to change the style. I want to keep going. I'll tab again. Size, edit combo. And I'm going to press down arrow. Eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. All right, so now it is on 12. I'm going to press enter. Print view, edit. Okay, so when you hear it say edit, you're back in your document. All right, now I'm going to deselect this text with my left arrow key. J, J and net. now I will show you how to get some formatting information. This is a JAWS command. It's insert and the letter F as in Foxtrot. So insert F will read a lot of information to you. And I'm going to do that right now. Bolded, italicized, single underline, 12 point, black on white, Times New Roman, normal style, line spacing, double, paragraph formatting, aligned left, outline level, body text. All right, so that was a lot of information there. We don't necessarily need to know all that at once. So I'm gonna show you another thing that you can do if you're just looking for a certain piece of information and you want to navigate to it quickly. If you hold down insert and you tap the letter F, Foxtrot, if you tap it twice quickly. Insertion point formatting bolded italics. All right, this, I, I pressed control to make Jaws stop talking because I wanna to explain to you what we have here. The information that Josh just read when we pressed insert F is now located in what's called the virtual viewer, which is a window that takes this information and puts it in this window so we can read it with our arrow keys. And so now I'll just down arrow here. Press escape. Wait, I'll control home to go to the top. Insertion point. All right. So now I can pre press down arrow. Bolded. So I, I know it's bolded. Italicized. Single underline, 12 point, black on white, times new Roman, normal style, blank, line spacing, double. And there we go. So those are the things that we changed and we want to verify. So when I'm finished reading that, I can press escape. Escape. Join us for word tips and tricks. And we're back in our document. All right. A couple of things, a couple more things about formatting, and then we're going to move on to some other things here that are very useful when you're navigating through documents. Um, I'm not gonna really get into this too much, but I do want to talk about using the tab key for indenting text. Um, you may be familiar with you know, spacing five times at the beginning of a paragraph, and you can do that, but I have been told before that it doesn't always format the way that you think it's going to. So oftentimes, for example, if I'm here at the beginning of this line, home. I can press tab 1.50 inches and I'm 1.5 inches from the left margin. You, usually the left margins are set, all the margins are set default at one inch. And so that 0.5 will indent 0.5 inches. But if I didn't want to do that, I could just press backspace J, and it says J because that's the letter I'm on, but then it should be left aligned. And once again, you can get that information by pressing insert F or insert F twice quickly. If it's indented, it will tell you and it'll tell you how far. One more thing to mention too, as far as indenting text is what is called a hanging indent. This is when rather than indenting the first line of the paragraph, the first line is at the left margin and the rest of the lines are actually indented. And you'll see this with things like works cited for research papers where it's a good way for someone who's cited to scan through these sources very quickly. And on that page, you'll have that first line, which is usually the author's name and some other information, but you'll have that first line at the left margin. And then the rest of the information for that source is indented. And what I like to do is I like to write that information and then select those lines. And then you can perform a hanging indent, which is control T. Hanging indent, 
one inch. And it just said one inch. And so it tells you. And I'll press backspace J. to get rid of that. Hopefully, maybe it got rid of it. Um, but you can always press Control Z to undo as well. Okay, one more thing, especially for formatting here, I want to show you is how to make a heading in a document. This one's really fun and it's really a whole lot simpler than I used to make it. So I'm on the title and headers, you'll see them on web pages. Headings are things like heading level one, heading level two. Level one is usually a title and level levels two through six or whatever, or, you know, are subtitles. Why would you want to do this in a document? Well, for one thing, it makes the document look good because it gives it a uh, heading level one has certain font and certain styles and certain attributes that it are associated with it. And the same thing with heading level two and so forth. It also makes it easier to navigate when you're using JAWS. So I'm going to demonstrate how to do this and I'm going to show you how to navigate the headings in a document. So I'm going to select this line. I'm going to do that with control Home. end because end takes you to the, I'm sorry, shift end. Um, end takes you to the end of your document. So pressing shift end will select this line. Selected. Join us for word tips and tricks from PowerJaws users. And then I'm going to press alt control and number one on the number row. Alt control one. All right. So now I can down arrow and up arrow again. Are you heading level one? Join us for word tips and tricks from PowerJaws users. And it said heading level one. So if it's control, alt control one for heading level one, alt control two for heading level two and so forth. Now I can press insert Z to turn on quick keys on quick keys and I can use the letter H to navigate through this document so if I'm reading a long document and I want to jump to a specific heading I can do that no more headings found and then I can turn those off again with insert Z if I want to keep typing in the document quick keys off all right how are we doing on time here I was it's just about to come in about five minutes okay Top of and leave right. me like a minute, Liz, because I want to talk about um, one power tip. Okay, great. Thanks. And, and we're a little flexible because we've got a little extra time. Okay. Well, I had I had a few more tasks I was going to cover, and I I won't cover them all, but they will all be in the handout if that if that would be helpful to you guys. Great. Awesome. Okay. Great. So I think um, inserting pictures was something that was definitely mentioned, and I want to go down to the bottom in, of this document. We're going to insert a picture. I want to show you how to do that. Page two, enter blank, blank. Okay, so I'm going to show you how to insert a picture from your computer. You can do that by pressing Alt and the letter N. Alt N, upper ribbon. And that takes you to the ribbon, and then you press P for picture. Illustrations toolbar, pictures button drop down pressed has pop up, pictures, Alt followed by N, P, D. Menu. All right, so I'm going to press the letter D, which is going to say from this device. If you didn't want to do it from this device, you could press your alt. I'm sorry, you press your arrow keys or your tab and move around here to choose something different. But I'm going to press the letter D. Leaving menus, leaving ribbons, edit, upper ribbon, ribbon, ribbon tabs, tab expanded, insert tab, alt followed by N. Leaving menus, leaving ribbons, insert picture dialog, file name. Okay, sometimes it takes a minute for JAWS Focus to catch up. So that's why it said all that stuff about the ribbon. But where it puts you is it places you in the file name dialog. Now I'm going to press Shift Tab to move up to where I know the folder list is. And I know I have a picture here. Explorer pane, folder layout pane, shell folder view, items view, multi select list box, header, name split button, not press selected Shift -tab blog again. posts. All right, so I press shift tab twice and that puts me in my list of folders. I'm going to press the letter F because I want to go to a specific folder. Files. And I'll enter. Explorer pane, folder layout pane, shell folder view, items view multi select list box, not selected photo 148705879227504 add 4AAF20. Okay, that was obviously downloaded because it has a very long name. Um, that, yeah, you can change. You can rename your own you know, photos and things. All right, so it said not selected. Now you can either down arrow to select it or you can press the space bar. Space, photo 1487. And then that selects it. And so if I press enter on this photo, on this file. Selected, 
Picture 1 image 6.5 inches wide by 4.33 inches high in line with text. And there we Moving have... menus. Table. We have a picture. Blog post join. And it's just going to keep reading because it's updating here. So now we have a picture in our document. And if we arrow around, I'll press up arrow. With text wrapping. And, oh wait. I'll escape. press escape, okay, because it had some settings there. So now I'll press up arrow, blank, and I'll press two. down arrow. A picture containing text, electronics, computer, description automatically generated image. And I can press right and left arrow here. Blank. A picture containing text. And we get a little bit of information about that picture. So that's one of those things you can place them wherever you want. You can move them over. You can resize them. But that is how you insert a picture. And I think, okay, one more thing I do want to talk about here because you guys requested this. Let's say you want a little bit of, this is quick, I promise. If you want a little bit of information about your document, let's say somebody sends you a document and it's this big, long document, and you just really want to get a feel for it before you start navigating. You can get what's called screen sensitive help from JAWS. You can press insert F1. This is a document window. This is the text area of an open document. And this again brings the information up about the document in the virtual viewer. So I can press control home to go to the top. This is a document. And now let's read just a little bit here. This is a document window. This is the text area of an open document. The document contains three link S, some of which may be link type fields. So it's telling me it contains links. The document contains three field S in total. The document contains one object in the text layer. And it's seeing an object, which is the picture. JAWS will detect text layer objective. And so you can just keep pressing down arrow to read through this information. It just kind of gives you a little orientation. And when you're finished, just press escape. Escape, a picture containing text. And we're back on that picture. So it's going to read that information. And it closes that virtual viewer and it places you back in your document. All right, Rachel, I'll turn it over to you. All right, really quick. And Liz, if you could open up a document that maybe has some messy parts. Uh, this one quick. is messy. Okay, cool. So yes. I just wanted to talk really quick about one of our power tips. We've been compiling these JAWS power tips and we can definitely send those along with the handouts. I think we have maybe like 40 related to JAWS. We have some related to Zoom text and some related to Fusion. And it's basically kind of our greatest hits of keyboard commands where it's the commands where you get a lot of bang for your buck for that one keyboard command and really seems to do a lot for people. And it's one of those ones also where we teach them and people are just like, oh, wow, I didn't know you could do that. And this in particular is one that I've learned recently and I found it super helpful. So I think of it as like the little bitty baby sister to text analyzer and text analyzer is a feature in JAWS that allows you to analyze your document for inconsistencies and you can you can work with it and you can do all kinds of things with it. It's pretty powerful, It'll pr pretty powerful. It will provide you a summary of all different types of inconsistencies in your document. And these are things you need to know about above and beyond gram grammatical errors and spelling errors. So the keyboard command I wanted to mention was Windows Alt I. So if you go through your document, it'll take you with that command to the next inconsistency. It'll jump through your document and take you one cons inconsistency at a time, whether it's a font change, letting you know, hey, there's a font change here, which maybe you know about because you made that a heading. Maybe you don't. It's because you pasted something in the document you didn't realize it had a different font. So Alt Windows I again, it'll tell you if there's a run on spaces, et cetera, et cetera. I just think it's a really powerful command that you can do to double check your document especially if you might not have time to go through text analyzer or someone else tells you the document's already been proofed, you can do a quick run through with it. And, and that's I can demonstrate that. Yeah, if I go press for it. Alt Windows I. Font change times new Roman space run at column 59. So it says space run at column 59. What that means is I have more than one space and at column 59, it's counting the characters as columns. So, usually space space it did space. so what it did was it placed me on that area space. so i can just delete one of these spaces backspace space and it's gone so if you just keep pressing like rachel said control i mean not control alt windows i it'll take you through all those inconsistencies and then add shift to that and it will take you back up 
So I'll take you to the previous ones. Yep. That's really handy. Yeah. All right. And then uh, if, go ahead. I was just going to say, if you want to turn on text analyzer, you can do that with a layered command, which is insert space, and then follow that with the letter A, and mm -hmm. that reads all consistencies, and you can do the same thing to turn it off. And you can also find more about that in the JAWS settings center as well. Ready for questions? That's amazing. That Ooh. definitely is. Uh, I'm not a JAWS user, and I may turn on JAWS to use that sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> fusion it's of my really computer. useful, I'm yeah. Zoom tech, yeah. Tech, but uh, that is handy, handy. Mm -hmm. uh, Jan, do we have anything in the in the com in the chat? No, we'll we stop sharing. Nope. Nothing in the chat. Controls. Okay. Does anybody have any any questions for Rachel or Liz? I think they did a great job of uh, demonstrating some of this stuff. Uh, I almost feel like when they got into it, I wish these tech breaks were an hour long, but we, we advertise them around a half hour, so we try to keep them that way. So uh, Yeah, we're happy to come I, back if you ever yeah. want us again. We're happy. I do have a quick question. Is the Windows Alt-I, is that the same as the insert Z for turning on quick keys? How you can turn on quick keys and go from inconsistencies? And can she do that with it? Is that the same as the insert z to turn on quick key navigation or not it is no no okay. no it's quick keys are like when you're navigating the web and you press t for table or h for heading it's no you can also do it in word for mm -hmm. uh mm -hmm. misspelled remember, words it's just like when you do insert z and then you do m i think that is the same what are you using what quick nav key yes what no which one i'll use the m for misspelled words no, that's uh, not the same. No. What, is, okay. what do you use for inconsistencies? I I just well I I didn't use that, uh, but I, okay. I, I thought there was. I was no, I don't think there is. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I don't no. think there is one for inconsistency. Okay. That's yeah, yeah. That's this, but that was a good question. But yeah, that is handy. Was, so you can do insert Z and jump through the misspell words, but this is of an extra layer of kind of formatting right. knowledge because it tells you visual information that a non-visual person needs to know about your document. Like if you have too many spaces in one place or unintentional font changes. Right, but yeah, those quick keys are, are similar to those that you find on a web page. It allows yeah. you to, to jump quickly through your document. Well, thanks for your question, Mickey. Uh, anybody else got any questions? I wanted to mention something. Okay. Um, I am glad that you guys mentioned the control too, because um, putting my papers in MLA format, I've been doing the whole process of um, Alt H for the double spacing. And so to quickly do Control 2 for double spacing, that is something that is going to be less time consuming. So I appreciate mm -hmm. that. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. And you know, another, there's a couple other things like you can use Control Shift period and Control Shift comma mm -hmm. to enlarge in small text and what are some other things? I If you have everything selected, you can use control one for single spacing, control five mm -hmm. for 0.5 spacing, and then yeah, control two for double spacing. Yeah, I would I would definitely appreciate that uh, sure. sheet that you guys yeah. are seeing Yeah, now. for sure. Mm -hmm. Control shift L for bullet. Oh yeah, I like that one okay, too. Yeah. I do too. That That's a lot one. easier than doing Alt-H-U. Mm. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Yep. Awesome. All right, and thanks, thanks for that, Hannah. Anybody else? I can wrap up and tell. I'd like to be able to tell everyone about our other, like where you can find our training content really quickly. You've got the floor. Go ahead, Rachel. All right. Um, happy to answer your questions. But real quick, while you're thinking of them, we do have a Freedom Scientific Training podcast that's available to listen wherever you listen to podcasts. You can also listen to it on your Google Home or Amazon Echo. You just say the wake word and say, play the Freedom Scientific Training podcast. And you can also subscribe on your smartphone and that way you can just flick through the episodes. And I think there's more than 50 on there right now, one hour training episodes. It's nice because you can listen on your phone or device and practice on your computer and go back. We also have a YouTube channel at Freedom Scientific Training. All of those videos are really well described if you're just listening. And so you can go to youtube.com forward slash Freedom Scientific Training or search for Freedom Scientific Training once you're at YouTube. And if you wanna find jump off points to everything I'm mentioning, our main training page, 
the URL is freedomscientific.com forward slash training. And you can jump off there to a page about our podcast, about our YouTube channel. You can also find all of the webinars we've done in the past and our upcoming schedule as well. So that's just a little bit. We also are on all of the social medias trying to engage with users. And so please join us on Twitter at Freedom Sci and at Freedom Scientific everywhere else. That's it. Sounds like Miller mm-hmm. Job got it covered from every angle, Rachel, right? We're working on it. <laughs> if you want it's... to hear what Freedom Scientific and the Sparrow has to say, there's no excuse, right? You'll find Yeah. <laughs> we tried to get it that way. <laughs> uh, do we have any last questions before we before we end this session? Uh, again, I want to I want to really thank <laughs> Rachel and Liz. This has been a great tech break. And, Can you uh, hear me? Yes, go ahead. Hi. I, my computer was doing updates in the beginning of the of this session so I didn't get to hear the first things that you guys were talking about but um, um, on the freedomscientific.com you said for slash um, training training yeah with an ing okay does it have it in, in a set does it have it where you can ask questions You know, that's a good question because the next thing I was going to mention is if you have any questions, I can give you our email address and Liz and I will both see these emails and it's training at the Sparrow, that's V as in Victor, I-S, P as in Papa, E-R-O.com. So training at the Sparrow.com. So right now, I don't know that there's a way on the training site to submit questions, but you can just email us directly and we'll try to get back with you if you have questions about anything. Okay. And, and just like someone else asked, you know, like um, what I did miss, y'all had a list that you can share. Yes. Of- We're going to be yes. sending over the handouts. Yeah. We'll be sending that over. Yes. We'll get it to you, Ina. Thank you. <laughs> That's awesome. I'm okay. taking names of who's here. <laughs> what? I'm taking names of who's here. Oh. And I know this is going to be recorded and we'll let you know when it's up so you can hear it in its entirety. Yeah. Thank I, you. I will get with Ann within the next day or so and make sure we get this stuff posted and, and all that. So we got some catching up to do on that. And I'll be in touch with you. All right. Well, everybody, thank you for joining. And I have, and- I have one more oh, question. Go this ahead. Not for the trainers, this is for the audience. Is there anything else you'd like them to come back and describe, train on? Oh, yes. The sky's the limit. That's the limit. Okay. Then we'll, if you don't have anything particular, we will come up with it. Yeah. And you can send that to training, too. We'll, I mean, you can send directly to me, Jan, and we can work out another date if you all think of something after this. Well, I'll tell you, I'm trying to wrap my head around teams yet. <laughs> yeah. And oh, that's, that's for sure. That's a complicated, uh, but no it's joke. It is, and we use it every day, so we are very familiar with it. Oh, fortunately yeah. or unfortunately, however you view that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you could, yeah that, that, that point could be debated. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> we can definitely break it down as some smaller tasks and and yeah. uh, demonstrate those because, yeah. In our YouTube channel, we have a couple like those are actually our longest videos. I think they're like eleven minute videos on using Teams bunch of different tasks about chatting and things like that so check those out as well we have a couple webinars too yeah webinars on those cool Mm, lighthouse and religions project speaking cool go ahead jack jack's on the phone i'm muting oh okay okay all right well again uh liz rachel i'm sure we're going to have you back y'all are a wealth of information and there's uh uh, I think a lot more questions will probably pop into people's heads as soon as I hit stop record. So um, <laughs> we'll probably get some more feedback and, uh, and we'd love to have you back again. So I'll leave that up to, uh, to Jan and Z and Brittany to line that all up and, and they'll let me know and we'll, we'll get the next one scheduled. Okay. All right. Sounds, sounds great. great. Thanks for right. having us. And we'll have those handouts on over to you. Thank you, Jan. Yes. <clears throat> Thank you. Right. Thanks. Yep, everyone. Good Thanks, seeing guys. you and hearing your voices. Bye. 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 Bye.
Brittany Walters has left the meeting. Bye bye, guys. Bye -bye. See you again. Hey, sure we'll be in touch. Anytime you come to Tyler, I'll buy you a barbecue sandwich. Okay. <laughs> All yeah. right, all right, sounds good. Sounds good. Okay, right, later. Spins and burger. Freedom Science Typical left the meeting. Jan Lynch has left the meeting.